Webster Institute of Technology, and today I'm going to go through a tutorial on how to take two black and white images from two different locations inside a scanning electron microscope and create a full color image. Of course, it's false color because scanning electron microscopes really only record um, intensity or black and white images. Uh, this is a full color spider here. This is a house, co uh, house spider, and it's at about 25x. I should say that this technique works really the best from maybe 20 to about 500x. Above that, it's really tough to get the two images to align correctly. But if you have a really conductive image or a really conductive sample, you can find that the alignment works uh, much better to even a high, a high magnification. Um, inside my machine, it's, it's got two different detectors. It's got a secondary electron detector there on the left and the center uh, where the beam goes right inside or through the backscatter detector. Um, there's two different locations for these detectors, so each of these images gets a little bit different view of the sample. And this is true at the lower um, magnification. Not so true once you get uh, really high magnifications, maybe above uh, two or 3,000 X. So I'm going to go through this procedure and we'll figure out how this whole thing works. This, is, uh, this video is to accompany an article and um, uh, hopefully this will explain some of the, the different keystrokes that you need to get your way through Photoshop. And I know that a lot of uh, scanning electron microscope people are not as familiar with Photoshop as uh, some of the, the people in the art world or the designers are. So to go through this tutorial, I'm going to first start by going to File. And under File, there's a script, which is a special little program built into Photoshop that does all sorts of things. Uh, and this particular script is, is built into the program, and it says load files into stack. So I'm going to take my two images, and these two images were, to, were collected under very similar conditions inside the SEM. Uh, these two images, I've, I've kept them on the, uh, the desktop, so I'm going to browse to the desktop wherever my images are. These two images are um, a secondary electron image and a backscattered image. I'm going to open those up. And this script, once I say OK, it's going to take these two images and it's going to load them into two different layers in Photoshop. The two layers, um, I, I typically, when I do this technique, um, I like to have the backscattered uh, detector shot on the top. And I use the secondary electron as my, my base layer. So I'm going to just mod switch those two around. The, um, Here's the backscatter electron is on, on the top. I can turn this eyeball off. That makes the bottom layer visible. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both of these layers. Make sure both visible. They're both highlighted here. And I'm going to come up under um, Edit. And I'm going to say Auto Align Layers. And what this will do is this will try to take all the structures and kind of warp each image to get it to the best alignment possible. So I, under projection, I hit auto here. I go OK. Now at this point, it might move some of the images around a little bit. And it can take a while, depending on how big your images are. And sometimes they give you these errors. It says it just, it just can't deal with it. Click OK, and we'll give it a try anyhow. So I'm going to go down to the base layer, and I'm going to apply some colors. And to do this, I come up here to Layer. And I'm going to say New Adjustment Layer, a Hue Saturation. And I'm going to link this to the layer below by clicking this little uh, Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. And I say OK. Now, at this, this point, I'm going to apply a color to the base layer. And I have to hit this little Colorize key this little colorized button here. And now if I adjust the hue, it'll take that hue and apply it to the base layer. Um, anything's fair game. This is false colorization. So you try to get pictures, try to get a color that's somewhat real for the object. This little guy was brown and white and black and all different colors. So I'm going to try to just pick a maybe a tan color in there. I can also change the saturation. And you really, anything that you've, you like artistically is really fine. Uh, on the web, a lot of times they like these super saturated colors, hot pinks and blues and such. Um, 
let's go with this. We can come back and change it later, and we probably will just to, to see what's, what looks good. So after I'm, I'm happy with the colors, I'm just going to click OK and get rid of this, just minimize this box. Now I'm going to go back to the second layer, and I think by turning it on and off, I can see what the alignment's like, and it's OK automatically, even though the Photoshop said it wasn't going to align them. It sort of did. Um, I'm going to go back to this top layer here, and I want to select this layer and copy it to the pasteboard. So I'm coming up here to uh, select, and I go select all, and I've got these little marching ants around the whole picture. That just means that it's been selected. Then I'm going to come up here to edit, and I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to copy this to a clipboard, um, which is just a, a location uh, to store the file temporarily, then we can repaste it to a new location. Now at this point I'm going to come up here to a layer and I'm going to make a new layer. And it's called a new fill layer. I'm going to pick a solid color. A lot of times when you do this, um, you just pick some gaudy color that doesn't really um, match your object. But you just pick a color because you can start working with it and you can always change it later. So I'm going to say new fill layer. And I say OK. I'm just going to pick a really horrible color like bright red and I say OK. Now this is where the tricky part comes in because I have to make this active. I'm going to paste stuff into this this mask layer. This is my mask layer and to do that I have to hit Option. This is on a, a, a Macintosh. I'm going to hit Option and I click on that little um, mask and it makes it active. Now at this point I'm going to take this second layer and I'm going to paste it in there by coming back up to Edit and I say paste, and it pastes that um, backscattered electron image into that mask. Now I'm going to come down to my next layer below, and I'm going to turn off that layer, and I have to click a couple times to turn it off. Um, and now this layer is applied as a mask, and I want to change some attributes about this layer. Up here it says normal view, but I really don't want it to be a normal view. I really want this to be uh, a different attribute. And really the best uh, attribute would be a screen setting. I click on screen and you'll see that it changes it. So right here I can change the opacity to kind of make it a little nicer. I can bring it down and that's probably pretty good for a, a jumping spider. Um, if I'm not happy with that red, I can come over here on the red and I can double click on that and I can pick another color like bright purple. Well. I'm not sure that bright purple is the best color, but I could pick a blue or a green. Um, purple looks not so bad, does it? I'm going to click OK. Now I can also go back to this bottom layer here, which is my hue and saturation, and click there and change my hue around to kind of match some sort of subtle colors. Um, I really want two different colors, though, obviously. Um, you can move it back and forth to find something that you're, you're kind of happy with. Uh, I don't know. That's probably about as good as I feel like uh, doing right at this moment. I'm going to just click OK. So um, you're going to probably end up picking better colors and such. Now one of the things that you want to do in the end is do a little bit of cropping. And to do cropping, I'll come over here to the Crop tool. And I just want to bring it in a little bit, probably because of the, uh, the alignments as it went through that align layer, it'll shift the layers a little bit and one will be uh, look a little strange around the edges. But you can crop in a little bit to get rid of those strange edge effects. And you just hit OK. And it'll automatically crop the image. And if I'm totally happy with this image, I can save it. I want to come up here to File. And I say Save. And I give it some name like test for this this particular situation. I'll say save. And at this point I can always go back and change all those colors and to anything that I possibly want. Um, if I'm going to show this picture on the web or in books or magazines or something like that, I want to come down here to a layer and I want to flatten the image. I want to get rid of all these Photoshop layers. So I flatten the image and I say, OK, it's going to discard any of the hidden layers. And now I want to save this, so I say Save As. 
and I'm going to save it as a JPEG instead of a Photoshop format. I come down to JPEG and I save it to the desktop. And I can also change the compression settings. Usually with JPEGs, you can, um, when I store them, I, I store them as the 12 setting, which is relatively no compression. And I can always pull them up later, resize them, and change the compression settings and such. So I hope this, uh, this little tutorial on colorization of two different uh, scanning electron microscope images has been useful. And um, uh, you're always welcome to stop by the RIT site for photographic sciences and see some of the other cool stuff that we do here. Thank you.